Such Hi. a pleasure to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Fiona, how have you been coping? Because obviously we, we, we've gathered you, you've got, um, is it asthma? Is that the, the, the main condition that's the... Yeah, yeah. Severe asthma. Um, it's been an interesting time, really. I think I've... I've never been somebody who's kind of fully accepted that I have asthma. <laughs> um, for me, asthma is something that you have when you're a child to, you know, get out of PE at school. <laughs> um, so I've always kind of, yeah, been a bit of a, not an asthma denier, but I don't really like to think of myself as a person with asthma or a person with a long-term health condition. Um, but of course that all changed last year um, when the pandemic hit and then all of a sudden people with certain health conditions had to be very careful. And that's when I kind of really changed my perspective on, on what it is to be a person with a long-term health condition. And Shivali, are we right in saying that you've got an underlying um, health condition you've had to sort of sh shield, particularly at the beginning of the pandemic? Well, I've been fortunate that we have our own firm and I have my own office, so I'm able to work um, in isolation. But yes, entirely shielding since March 2020. And because of me, children are also shielding and my husband the whole family have been really supportive of that um, but that in itself has its challenges I think at the beginning I was really scared to even hug the children or kiss the children in case I was a carrier and I might give it to them or the fear of maybe they've picked up from school and if I get it I'd rather not hug them for a little while than not be here so, I, yeah, I think we were really thinking about things in larger terms and that was really daunting, it was really daunting. Um, a lot of anxiety going around, wasn't there? It's kind of, you know, that unknown and, and that fear. It's, it actually, that ate away and eroded more about families and family life, I think, than anything else mm -hmm. at the beginning. And we live in a, a multi-generational family. So it's mum and dad, then us, and then the kids. And having the older age category in the house as well, we felt really protective of them. You know, with the um, you, the warnings out there for those with asthma and underlying health conditions and like and things like that, with the uncertainty of not knowing what it was about the pandemic that was going to be um, a sort of a threat or a complication, was that really worrying for you? I mean, did you reach out to your GP? I did, yeah. I mean, I think my GP hates me now. I've <laughs> so much. Um, I think one of the main things I was worried about was things like simple things like getting your prescription, you know, because there was all those kind of worries about literally leaving the house. Um, so, you know, I spoke to her about that. I spoke to her about shielding. I spoke to her about, you know, hopefully getting on some kind of priority list. So, yeah, we've been in touch a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And, and how do you feel, uh, Fiona, about the vaccinations and things? Because you're almost, you're imminent, aren't you, in terms of on the list? I can't wait, yes. <laughs> I'm priority group six. Um, so any day now, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping to get called up. Shivani, particularly you with your diabetes, who've been your sort of support networks? I have, um, I'm a member of Diabetes UK and um, have friends in those circles. So I've been able to lean on them a lot for support and touch in and uh, touch base with them and any queries questions but also they've been really good at sending me information about the COVID-19 situation any updates that are relevant to my health condition um, I think my my biggest support on an emotional and a mental level has, has got to be my family you know I feel like we're closer than we were ever were before any any worries about vaccinations or anything like that? You're good with needles? Fine. I mean, I'm, you know, don't love them. I mean, who does? Yeah. Um, but I am, I'm very pro-vaccine. I actually have a pro-vaccination policy at the nursery. So I have always been somebody who truly believes in vaccines. I truly believe in science and medicine. And, you know, I think that is the best way to kind of, you know, look ahead to have a, a much brighter future and, and go back to normality. So... Yeah, a massive believer in vaccines, and I really hope as many people as possible, you know, when they get called up for it, that they take it. A little bit nervous about, but at the same time quite excited about, because it means it's one step closer to seeing my mum and my siblings and the extended family that I miss massively. Because though I have my unit here, I haven't seen my mum this year. And for us, she's only half an hour down the road, but those, that half an, half an hour is like miles 
million miles at the moment. And Shivali, can I ask what, what it is that you're sort of nervous about in, in having a vaccination? Um, so initially, I read a lot about everything. I think when you have a health condition, you do. You just read whatever you can find. Um, and then I'd read a few things that made me think, oh, I'm not sure. It sounds like there's something around it which might not be safe or the ingredients. Um, and I read a lot of, um, sort of social media posts again where I felt a little bit nervous. And just like this condition, like this virus, the idea of this vaccination is new, but the more people that get it, you realize that actually it's helping. And the numbers are showing that, the figures are coming down, you know, all positive things. Catherine and I are not medical experts by any means, but if it's any consolation, we can wholeheartedly support you know, having vaccinations, it's its really, really important. We've spoken to a lot of people about it and, um, you know, the uptake's been been amazing so far. We've got to keep it going so that the younger generations also feel, um, you know, that uh, it's really important for them to have it. So it's great that you're, you know, Shivani, you're, you, you know, you're taking your time to kind of work it out and I've come to a conclusion that, you know, I, I need to do this because social media is awash sometimes with with lots of rumours and misinformation. So we have to be a little bit careful who we who we believe and where we, we get our information from. But um, especially for those who are clinically vulnerable as well. It's so important that, um, that those vaccinations are done. So good luck. What, what change do you think it will allow you, apart from sort of worrying less and being able to sort of move about a bit more? I think I'm trying to not see it as a magic cure. I'm not going to go out licking lampposts or anything <laughs> straight away. Um, I think I'm, I'm probably going to do what I do normally. You know, I'll, I'll still wear my mask. I'll still keep the hand gel, still social distance. Um, but it's nice to know that kind of mentally you have that layer of protection and that if you do end up being unfortunate enough to catch it, that it, it won't be as severe as it might have been without having been vaccinated. Is Kira there? We'd love to say hi to her. Yeah, she is. Kira, do you want to come in? Okay, come sit next to me here. Have a seat. Hi, Hello, Kira. Kira. Hi. Very nice to meet you. Are you, are you how are you getting on with school? Is your mummy a really good teacher? Yeah. I bet. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> your mummy is saying she's loving homeschooling, but wasn't sure if you were liking it too. Uh, I like it at some times and I don't like it sometimes. <laughs> Are you missing your friends, Kira? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. It's hard, isn't it, when you're not all together, being able to see them, muck around with them as well. That's the main thing, isn't it? I'm just not as fun, as much as I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking forward to going back to school? Oh, I'm much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what are the best bits about school? Do you like your friends? Is it sports? What do you like? Yeah, my friends, and I like having PE lessons, and I like having my friends help me when I don't know the answers. <laughs> That's very handy. <laughs> <laughs> I like having people to cheat from. <laughs> I guess it's the unknown and I think that's the case for most people it's just something that's unknown right now and by the time you've had it it can be anything. But I hope it comes as a huge relief in the end you know I know maybe there's sort of the anxiety and the worry leading up to it but I hope for all of you it will add a bit of normality back to to your lives and confidence as well as we go I'd, forward into this into the spring it would be great. I'd love for everyone to have it so things can be a little bit more normal it'd be nice to have my staff back in the office and yeah I also hope though that people don't rush into it into kind of meeting and groups and stuff until they've had the second one and waited the right amount of time because I think there's a little bit at the moment I've been reading recently where people seem to think they've had the first one but that's it they're ready to go um, and I you know like to stress that be a little bit cautious still and keep doing what you should be doing with precautions and important to keep doing that still. Quite right, absolutely. It's so nice to chat to you both and we wish you the very best, uh, Fiona, getting your vaccination done. Thank you. Bring a bit of uh, life back, um, a bit of normality for you guys too. Yeah, absolutely. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you both. It's been a real honour, so thank you. <laughs>